Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, not out on another walk. This time I'm back in my winter retreat. The weather outside has been awful, wet, miserable, grimy. Oh, I can't take my equipment out there and let it get soaked, so I've decided to stay inside where it's relatively warm. Anyway, if I had have gone out for a walk today, I would have been going to have a look at a town hall. Well, one that's not actually there, to be honest with you. I live in a place called Worthing in West Sussex, down at the foot of the south coast and the edge of the English Channel. And the, the town hall that there is is all very nice and, you know, lovely and what have you. I have very little to do with it, luckily. But there was, in Worthing, an old town hall. And the, one of the reasons I want to look at this is because during the 1960s, a lot of buildings, a lot of beautiful buildings, were demolished in the way of progress and it's debatable whether that was progress when you look at some of the monstrosities that they put in their place. So back before there was a town hall, roughly in 1818, a doctor, one of the two doctors in Worthing, thought wouldn't it be great to have a clock tower because well, people weren't obviously keeping their appointments because not many people could afford watches. They were very expensive things back then and only the rich and wealthy could afford that sort of thing. So a, a nice clock tower in the town centre would be perfect. And he reckoned that they could raise the money by public subscription, which was a great idea. Now, of course, the Victorians did a lot of that sort of thing. So um, they decided that would be the idea and they actually raised more money than they realised. And so it was muted that you could have a town hall as well. We could have a town hall with the clock tower on the top, which was a, a splendid idea because up until then, the town councillors or the town commissioners, whoever they were, tended to sort of get together in a pub and make whatever pronouncements they were going to do. So they started to raise the money, but it wasn't until 1834, I think it was, that the town hall building started to be built. It started to commence. Now, of course, it takes a bit of time to make a town hall. Obviously, you've got to get the architect to draw up relative, relatively good plans and everything else, but all of that happened. And then in, well, it was the next year, 1835, the town hall was finished. But they had to find a place to put it, first of all. And there was a lovely plot of land, a garden, as it happens, um, in the centre of Worthing, just at the north end of South Street. It would belong to Sir Timothy Shelley. Now, this is the chap who was the father of the poet Percy Shelley. Now, we all know Percy Shelley and, of course, his wife, Mary, who wrote that book, Frankenstein. Well, it was negotiated to purchase this bit of land in the north of South Street, which was a garden, where they were going to place the town hall. And of course, then subsequently it was built and it was all very nice and lovely. And on the top was the, the clock, which was the main thing, the reason it was built. And everybody was happy. And it, it must have been a magnificent building. You had the town councillors having their first meeting in June 1835, up there on the first floor. On the main ground floor, the big chamber down there, housed the town's fire engine. Very important place. I mean, it'd be a bit ridiculous these days to put a fire engine in a town hall. But back then, I'm sure they were very proud to have it there, central to the town. Probably um, something that was drawn by horses so that you'd charge out of there. It must have been quite a sight, if you think about it, charging out of there. Come on, ringing their bell. Bing, 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 bing. Fantastic. Um, I'd love to have been around to have seen it as they go off because, you know, it was very much the old fashioned way of putting out fires with stirrup pumps and all that sort of stuff. They had a big long ladder, which uh, they kept strangely, um, up against the front of the town hall. Now, presumably, they would take the fire engine out and then get this long ladder um, up on, on the top of the fire engine in some way and then go careering off so they could lean this ladder, this sort of escape ladder, to get people out. Come on, come on, onto the ladder, missus. Get you down onto, into safety whilst they attempt to put out the fire. You know, there's been a number of 
fires in Worthing and maybe I'll go into that on another occasion. Anyway, so that was one thing they kept in the town hall. Down in the basement or down in the cells, they were, or rather the cellar, there were cells. Those are for the vagabonds and the uh, the thieves and the cut purses. Those people who were a little, um, shall we say, on the other side of the law. They were held there until they were taken off to wherever to be tried or perhaps just put, put in there because they were drunk for the night. A wonderful, a wonderful thing for your town hall to have. So there it was. It stood there for about a hundred years in use and for then about a 30 years not in use because in 1933 obviously being a seaside town the town had increased in size and more people were coming you had the railway line come in and people were coming down there was a lot more for the town councillors to do and so they needed a lot more space and so of course they needed a bigger building or twas ever thus so further north in Worthing, they built a bigger building and, it, and it's, it's there to this day. And it's, as I say, it's a very nice building, um, similar-ish in design, but a, a lot longer, a bit more sort of Georgian in style, but, but not quite perfectly in Georgian in style. But it's a, you know, it's a nice enough building and the war memorials out the front. But the old building was no longer used. And in fact, in 1950, it was deemed that the clock itself on the top of this tower was unsafe. I'm not quite sure what, but maybe the masonry was cracking and it was liable to fall down, something like that. And so it was taken down first of all. And then sometime later, the rest of the town hall, which had begun to be get into a bit of a sorrowful state, was demolished 1966. And that's when all the nasty bits of the 1960s demolishing lovely public buildings and others to make way for progress as I said at the beginning came about which was a bit of a shame but it seems to me that it was a lovely building and it's such a shame that it's gone back in the 60s we can't do anything about it but they didn't have that same feeling for these old buildings that we have so that's the story of the Worthing Town Hall. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to mention that is because I think it was a lovely building. You look at the pictures and I think it's a splendid building. It's of its time. It's an important building of its time. And this must have been going about, um, this must have been happening all over the country, up and down. There would have been town halls or public buildings of one shape or, an or another. And then at some point, somebody thought it a good idea to knock that down and put some awful 1960s monstrosity up. And we're left with those still. And maybe, if we're lucky, they'll be knocked down and something perhaps a bit more beautiful will be erected in its place. And that would be good. But, of course, architecture and the beauty of architecture is, as naturally people say, in the, uh, in the beholder. And I've spoken to a couple of people actually about the town hall and somebody said to me, he said, oh, it was an ugly building. They thought it was horrible and they were glad that it was gone. And I thought that's curious because to me, it's a, it was a very lovely building. So I thought what would be fun during the winter, whilst I'm many times are gonna be trapped inside and unable to go out, perhaps we could get everybody else involved as well. So, I thought, let's have a look at the uglification of Britain. Wherever you are, or, or not necessarily a Britain, it can be anywhere in the world, to be honest, the uglification. Buildings are erected which they just look ugly, or they're mean, or they're just grim. And I thought it would be great to see if you could submit some photographs to me and, and show me some of the ugly places that you think, because you may think some of the buildings that I like are ugly and I may think vice versa. And of course, conversation and disagreement is all good for us. So what is the most ugliest building that you have in your town or one that just doesn't do it for you? It can be an old building, can be a new building. I don't mind which. And we'll post the pictures up perhaps on the Bald Explorer Facebook page or even on the baldexplorer.com website. It'd be great to see what you've got. So post them on Facebook if you're on the Bald Explorer page at Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Bald Explorer. Um, or you can send them to me at richard at and I'll put them up on the 
on the on the on the website <laughs> on the Bald Explorer website. What one way or another they'll get to me. So there we go. That's the idea. So thanks very much for watching. And until I manage to get out, let's hope it's soon. We'll get out for another walk like we have been back in the winter retreat. Till then, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.